towards us, God. We thank you, Lord, for just blessing us to be here one more time, dear God. Lord, we thank you for how you just even woke us up this morning, God, how you started us on our way, gave us even the activities of our limbs, God. Lord, and we just uh, thank you for all the things that we may even take for granted, even the articulation of our speech, the breath that we breathe right now, dear God, the means in which we are functioning, God. Lord, but we just thank you on today, God. We thank you for how you blessed us and how you touched us, dear God, and how you're still touching our bodies right now. God, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you have brought us through. God, we ask that you would just um, bless those that are on their way, those that are tuning in on today. God, we ask that you would just uh, send your word through me, God. Lord, and I ask that you remove me in every way. God, that as your word go out, that it fall on fertile ground. Lord, I just thank you right now because God, as your word is planted into our hearts and minds, Lord, Lord, we understand that we can reap a harvest in your word. So God, we just thank you and we praise you. But God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. 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 We thank amen. God for, amen, just being in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. For just coming in and uh, just allowing uh, us to assemble here amen. and allowing us to bring forth God's word on today. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we come into God's house and, and we come into God's house with all kinds of issues and cares and worries and stress and, and, and sometimes even pain. But when you enter into uh, God's house, you have to understand that you're coming to a place where uh, the spirit of the Lord is. Uh, we understand that he's everywhere at all times, but it's something different when you assemble yourselves in the house of the Lord with like minded people that you can grab hold to and you can touch and you can relate to. So we just thank God for just us being here once again. And those that are, are tuning in, may God bless you in your respective uh, areas. Uh, we just want to look at a, a story or incident that happened in the Bible, in the book of Nehemiah, in the book of Nehemiah. And uh, in this uh, book here, as I was uh, re reading it again, and as I was looking over uh, the message on today, it began to uh, reveal to me some things uh, that took place in Nehemiah that actually uh, impacts us at times when we're trying to do something. Uh, just to throw the uh, title to you real quick, it's removing the rubbish to rebuild. Removing the rubbish to rebuild. And oftentimes we find ourselves uh, when we get ready to do something or we get ready to uh, rebuild or, or fix something up, we have to tear down some stuff. We have to remove some stuff out of our uh, way and out of our uh, that's no longer useful uh, for us. And and we find in uh, this story in uh, Nehemiah, that was the situation for them. They were uh, a remnant of the captivity uh, that uh, had escaped and had went back to Jerusalem. And uh, you find that they are there. Uh, and uh, the, the whole city and, and walls and everything is in disarray. And uh, I'm just going to read these uh, scriptures. It's only uh, two scriptures. That's our foundation scripture, uh, maybe three. That's our foundation scripture. But uh, we're going to address uh, this uh, book called Nehemiah. Uh, let's read it. Uh, Nehemiah 4 and 2. Verse, uh, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 2. And we're going to read verse 10. And we're going to read chapter 6, verse 15. It says this. It says, And he spake before his brethren, and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble uh, Jews, um, will they uh, fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the, the day, in the day? And it says, uh, will they revive the stones out of the heaps uh, of the rubbish which are burned? Verse uh, number 10 says, and Judah said, uh, the strength of the bearers of a burden is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to rebuild the wall let's jump to uh, chapter 6 verse 15 and, and that says so the wall was finished in the 20th and uh, 20th uh, 20 and 5th day of the month and in the 52 days 
So uh, I wanted to read you how they were starting or getting ready to build the wall and then how uh, give you the end uh, also in the beginning as well that they finished the wall. But the thing that we need to understand is there was some incidents and things that took place uh, in the process of rebuilding. And oftentimes in our life, when we're in the process of rebuilding, we find some things uh, that, uh, you know, come unaware. We find some things that pose a problem in the rebuilding. Uh, for, for instance, when you're, uh, I, I like watching the old uh, uh, remodeling shows and things of that nature. And when they look at something, they say within themselves, oh, I can tear this wall and down and do this and do that. But in the interest or process of time, they find themselves, uh, when they tear something down, they find a hidden thing. Uh, termites, uh, damage, water damage, whatever it is. And then they have to address that problem. Uh, stay with me just for a few moments. But uh, we, we find uh, that in Jeremiah's case, and, and I'm going to bring us up to speed uh, for a few moments as to uh, what is actually uh, going on. Uh, and, and when we look back into the uh, start of this book uh, called Nehemiah, we find uh, that uh, they were tasked to rebuild the walls and, and rebuild uh, the city. Now, we, we started off with uh, Jeremiah, uh, Nehemiah is going to uh, get a word from uh, the Lord and he's going to be inspired to go and build this uh, wall uh, around Jerusalem once again. But uh, the thing that we need to uh, understand is at times we need to remove some rubbish in our life to rebuild. Uh, and that could go uh, naturally and spiritually because uh, when we get into it, if the Lord say the same, sometimes we, uh, God wants us to uh, uh, rebuild our spirit and, and get ourselves spiritually sound and we find ourselves uh, being stuck with a bunch of debris and things in our life that's hindering us. So uh, uh, this in a sense is a natural thing that is taking place here, but it has a, a, a more spiritual meaning later on. Uh, so here we, we find, and, and I'm just going to set the backdrop real quick. We find that Nehemiah is uh, in Shushan and he's in the palace of Shushan where he was a cupbearer for the king. He was a, a, a cupbearer for the king and we find that he, he comes in and uh, he begins to uh, uh, talk to these ones who are, are coming uh, from uh, Judah, who is coming from uh, Jerusalem, and he's getting ready to inquire of them uh, the state of what's going on. He starts off in chapter one by asking them, uh, how is uh, those captives? How is those ones that uh, have escaped and got free and are living now in Jerusalem? Now you have to remember the city was destroyed. The city was burned down. The walls was burnt down and, and, and all those things that was going on, it, it was destroyed. But he's inquiring why he's uh, being the cupbearer for the king. He's asking him, uh, asking them that is, is coming and he's uh, asking them, uh, uh, a man by the name of uh, Hanamai, he asked him, he says, look, what is going on in the city? He said, how is the city uh, functioning uh, in, in a sense? How is the uh, escaped captive, uh, captives uh, uh, functioning there? And they begin to tell him about the condition of the city. They begin to tell him that it's in disarray. They begin to tell him that it's a great affliction that's uh, taking place here. Uh, and, and there's uh, hardly anything uh, within the city uh, that's recognizable. And, and he tells the, they begin to tell him about the walls being uh, torn down. Down and how they're broken down and, and, and all these things. And you can find that in chapter one, verse three, where they talked about how the wall is just uh, the city is destroyed and, and the walls are broken down and and is such a, a, a great despair there. And, he, and they begin to explain to him that all the gates of the city is destroyed. Now, when you look at it and you do the research and even when you read in, Je in uh, Nehemiah, you're going to see that there was so many gates to the city. 
you have Jerusalem and you have a, a wall that's surrounding the entire uh, uh, city of, of David, the entire uh, uh, region of Jerusalem. And in these gates uh, uh, or in these different entryways was what they called them gates. And it was so many gates to the city. Uh, there was a, a gate called the valley, a gate called the dragon, a gate called the fountain where the king's pool was. It was a, a dung uh, gate. It was a sheep's gate. It was all kinds of gates uh, that, that was uh, in the city. And when Jeremiah, when Nehemiah gets there, uh, and he, he begins to inquire about what is going on. But here we, we, we go down and we have to hasten. I'm, I'm going to try to give you the, the gist of this entire book in, in a few uh, minutes. But here we find that uh, even in verse uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 8 and 9, Jeremiah says uh, this, or, or he begins to uh, get some clear picture of what's going on. He says, he, after he witnessed and he see all that he is seeing and, and he uh, goes, uh, well, let, let, me, let me go back, let me go back. He begins to uh, uh, think about the things that is, is going on here, and he begins to uh, remember how the, the city was. And then in verse 8, it says, Remember, I beseech thee the word uh, that I commanded, that Moses had commanded, uh, uh, saying, uh, If ye uh, are trespassed, uh, transgress, sorry, uh, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. He's referring back to God. He prays to God and he asks God about uh, the situation that's going on. Once he hears that there was work to, that needed to be done and the walls in the city need to be rebuilt and he then goes to God and he asks God about uh, what is going on. He sits there, the Bible says, he weeps, he mourns and, and he fasts and he prayed uh, and he begins to call on God. God. And, and this is just a portion of him talking to God and telling God what is going on. He said, Lord, you said if uh, uh, by the rules of, of Moses and the laws of Moses that if we transgress against you, that you wouldn't you won't be with us. But he said, if you, we believe in you and continue with your commandments and, and all those things, uh, he said, we shall be blessed and you shall uh, bring us out because we are your chosen people. So he's reminding God as if God needs to be reminded of the things uh, that he uh, is uh, asking him for and the things that he told Moses. But he then goes in and he prays again to God and he asks God, he said, look, God, I need you to give me favor or mercy before I go to the king. Uh, now, he was the king's cupbearer, so he was a close person to the king. Whenever the king needed something to drink, he was the one that brought the drink to the king. He brought him the wine that he wanted them to, uh, to drink, and, 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 uh, and the cupbearer had a, a, a serious uh, a role because if something happened to the king after he drunk, then they would accuse the cupbearer. But uh, Nehemiah goes to uh, the king and and something uh, must have uh, been wrong with Nehemiah because as he goes, he he's going before the king and he's not himself. He looks different to the king. And excuse me. And you can see that in chapter two, he begins to look different to the king. And that's just like us today. Sometimes we're going through things and we think that we have put on the best front that we could. We think we have put on the best false face we could. And then there's people that know us and can see that something is different. They see that something is just not quite right. So the king, he's going before the king and he's bringing him something to drink. And the king then looks at him and says, uh, Nehemiah, you look different. What, what's going on? And, and the Bible said that his uh, countenance looked sad. It, it didn't look joyous like it used to look to the king. So the king asked him, what's going on? He said, King, I, I, I was just thinking uh, here for a, a moment. Uh, my father's sepulcher is in Jerusalem and uh, the city, they tell me, is in uh, despair. They tell me that the walls is, is torn down and the gates are burnt and charred. He said, and that's where my father's sepulcher is. And, and the king said, oh, I understand. I, I see you're satting for that. And then he says, but uh, uh, king, I, I need a favor of you. He then goes and prays again to God before he asked this. And he asked the king, can I go back to my father's, uh, uh, where my father's sepulcher is in Jerusalem and rebuild? My God. 
So the king is, is talking to him and, and the king is saying, uh, well, well, how long is this going to take you? Uh, how long is this going to uh, be? Because again, he was in high position. The king couldn't just replace a cupbearer. He had somebody had to have been uh, trustworthy and, and found uh, worthy of that position uh, because you were close again to the king. And, and there was many people that was after to try to assassinate uh, the king and, and all those things. We, we understand that through history. But the king said, how long are you going to be there uh, dealing with uh, this uh, issue of rebuilding? The Bible don't give us a set time as to what uh, Nehemiah said, but it said they agreed upon a time. Yeah. They agreed upon a set time and, and that upon that agreement, he then allowed him to go. But I like what Nehemiah did and it pays for us to pay attention to is because sometimes uh, you need to get something in writing. All right. Jeremiah said, look, I can take your word and you can take my word all day, but it's best to get it in writing. Uh, uh, Nehemiah said to the king, he said, now, if, if it uh, pleases you, king, please send a letter along with me that when I go into uh, my uh, uh, father's land or go back into Jerusalem, that those governors that are there, they see me and they will uh, understand that I'm by the direct rule of the king, that you have sent me along to do what I need to do. Yeah. Now, the thing we need to pick from that also is uh, he was preparing himself for the rebuilding. Yeah. Yeah. He was preparing and, and making sure that he had things lined up and in place uh, because he knew he was going to have to deal with some rubbish. Yeah. He knew he was going to have to deal with some folks. But the, as the uh, story goes on, the king gives him a letter and he says, and can I have in this letter uh, a petition to uh, uh, those ones that is uh, dealing with your, your forest and, and those ones that provide the timber he said can I get a letter asking or requesting that whatever I need to rebuild uh, I can get from uh, the, your your timber yard and the king said all right take what you need and, and here's the letter he then goes out and he goes into Jerusalem he finds in Jerusalem some situations that just is not good to him and, and uh, the moment that he gets there he starts surveying the situation the moment he starts uh, thinking about this rebuilding, he has to look and see uh, what is actually going on. But the thing that, 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 that sort of stuck out in my mind is in chapter 2, verse 10, it begins to tell us about these two fellas that uh, was up against them from the beginning. And oftentimes when you are going about not doing anything and they're happy with you being in rubbish and, and being in a, a state of sadness and, and a state of uh, not functioning because that's what the city was doing, uh, people are happy. People are joyous for that. But then it, when you're about to do something or rebuild or gain your strength or get back in line or be restored, you have some folks that step up and begin to talk about you. Oh, I know I'm right anyhow. Because in chapter 2, verse 10, it says, uh, Sam Balak, uh, of, uh, uh, who was a... Uh, uh, a Horite and a Tobias, a servant, these two guys are going to come on the scene and they're going to be exceedingly, the Bible said, they're going to, it's going to grieve them exceedingly that they are starting to work on this city, that they are starting to rebuild the walls uh, around Jerusalem. These two guys get so infuriated that they begin to uh, uh, say all kinds of things to them. They begin to uh, do all kinds of things uh, to uh, the children of Israel that's trying to rebuild this wall. Uh, and when we jump down uh, uh, to this uh, uh, 17th verse in chapter uh, 12, we see that uh, the distress was on uh, uh, Israel or on Jerusalem because uh, it was lying in waste. It was almost destroyed, almost uh, uh, unrecognizable. It was once a great city. It was once uh, a city to be uh, uh, looked at and in awe. But now we find that, that it's, it's pretty much destroyed. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with your, your situation in a minute. But I'm just trying to give us some, some, some background here to bring us up to speed. But, but here we, we, we see in that chapter, in that verse 17, that it says the gates thereof was burnt with fire and, and uh, has come down. Down and and uh, he's saying, let us build them up. Je uh, Nehemiah is saying, look, we need to start building these walls in Jerusalem. Yeah. He, he said, uh, I, I understand that 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 
that there's going to be situations. I understand that there's going to be uh, problems and, and, and I, I see how it looks now. But but he's saying God, God is on our side. Because if you look in verse 18 uh, of chapter 2, he tells them that the hand of God was uh, good on him. And he asked the king to go and uh, deal with uh, these gates that was burnt down. And he said, um, and he gave me permission to rebuild. And it says, and straight, uh, and so they straightened their hands for good work. So after he got done giving them the speech that we have to rebuild uh, uh, this this uh, broken walls and this city down, uh, the, the Bible said it strengthened their hands in yes, that verse yes. eighteen, meaning that they were uh, uh, they, they were happy and they were ready to do the work. But see, everybody that's ready to do the work ain't going. Mm. Everybody that's ready to, to do the work ain't going to stick with you. Ain't going to stick with you. Mm. I'm going to leave that alone for just a second. But but we find that when we when we jump down into uh, verse uh, 19, we, we, we find that uh, uh, they, they were happy and ready to, to do this uh, building of the wall. But in verse 19, Hickam, uh, uh, Sambalik, and, and Tobiah, they're coming back uh, and they're now going to uh, laugh at them because... They see what they have to work with. Oftentimes, people see what, what you have to work with. They think that it's no way you can prosper. Amen. It's no Amen. way that God can take or, or you can take what you have that's, that, that is uh, almost uh, uh, rubbles and stubble and all those things and how you can function. Yes. Uh, so yes. they begin, the Bible said, to laugh them scorn. See, what they were trying to do was frustrate them. Right. They was trying to frustrate them and they was trying to fatigue them because they understood that, that these ones was about to do a, a great work. Now, now once those walls got uh, rebuilt it was been uh, 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 hard for uh, someone to come in and try to destroy it again but but the Bible said that they laughed at them the, the Bible said uh, they, they actually laughed them to scorn and and they begin to say all kinds of stuff they they said they uh, despised them they they said that they uh, uh, how was they going to build from uh, all these this rubbish that's here or the stones are uh, going to uh, uh, get back new and all this stuff they begin to say all kinds of stuff to them and trust and believe just like today when you are about to do something especially a work for God here come the attack of the enemy to try to frustrate you to try to tell you it ain't going to work to say oh well you, you don't have enough within your being and all those things and even in the natural sense when you are about to do something and you have an idea or or something that God has birthed in you and you begin to tell people what your mission is and what you're about to do you have some folks that laugh at you. You have some folks that begin to talk about you. They, they may not do it in your face. They may well go behind your back and, and do all that they uh, want to do, but, but trust and believe you have some folks that's, that's out there that's against what you're about to do. Against that you're about to rebuild your life and get your life back together and get it back on track to what God had for you to, uh, uh, to be. There's some folks that want you to stay in that same rubbish situation, in that same problem problems and that that the same uh, uh stress and all those other things they they want you to stay there and these two men was heart set on making sure that Israel did not rebuild these walls they tried everything within themselves uh, uh, to, to stop them from building this walls. Let me hasten this thing along. When we get into chapter 3, we find that they are, are doing all kinds of things. We find that the, the men started working on the wall and we, we find that they're, they're doing uh, uh, little things at a time and uh, Nehemiah has linked up with the, uh, some of the Levites that was still up in the city and some of the workers that was there and they began to work hand in hand. See, that's key that we understand that because when we read in this chapter three, the Bible often says, and next unto them uh, was so-and-so and next unto them was so-and-so. It lists about maybe five to six times. It says, and next unto them, or meaning beside them, that they were working together. It's nothing like when you can get a few folks together and y'all work together to accomplish something. You don't have that bickering and, uh, and backstabbing and all that. You're just about the mission and about the work and you have those few ones that that says I'm going to jump on board with with rebuilding and repairing what is needed to be done so in that third chapter to condense it we find that they start to rebuild these old gates they start to uh, begin to repair the things that 
was destroyed, they begin to uh, uh, get the timber from uh, the king's uh, timbermen and, and they begin to begin to work on these gates. And the very first gates that they begin to uh, uh, fix up is that gate called the sheep's gate. They began to fix up the sheep's gate uh, because they understood that, that at, at some given moments and times uh, uh, that they're going to need to do some sacrificing. Yeah. They're going to need to uh, uh, sacrifice unto God what he has blessed them uh, with. But uh, Nehemiah links up to these priestly people and, and these brothers and, and he, they say, uh, we're going to go out and walk the wall and see exactly what we need to fix. Yeah. They go out there and they begin to walk in the wall and they find the sheep's gate and they said, we need to fix the sheep's gate first yeah, right, we right. need to fix this uh, uh gate first uh, because once we get the sheep's gate fixed uh, we can then build upon the rest of the way uh -huh. now now I, I can just uh imagine in in my, my my mind when when we're dealing with that 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 sheep's gate they they fully understood that it was something about that lamb it was something about that sheep that they was worried about because they wanted to make sure they could sacrifice once things got on the way right. because that was uh, one of the requisites that God told them or Moses told them that when you come out of Egypt I want you to sacrifice I want you to do X Y and Z and that that was uh, a reasoning behind them I believe rebuilding this sheep's gate first right. they wanted to uh, show that they understood fully what uh, Moses was telling them right. but through the process of rebuilding they was being insulted by these two guys right. by uh, Sambalat and uh, Tobiah, they they were being uh, insulted all day long. Now I don't know about you, but but when I'm doing something and somebody's constantly nagging me, I get frustrated. All right, all right. I get frustrated, but after a while, I get fatigued uh, also in my process because I'm saying I'm doing this and, and I'm going through the motions and and all these things, but uh, I'm getting insulted. I'm I'm getting uh, uh, slandered and and lied on and all these different things and. They got to a point where they got frustrated. They got to a point where at first they got fatigued. Now we, we have to go back to uh, chapter 4, our foundation scripture, and we're going to bring it home. It says uh, in uh, chapter 4, verse 2, it says, And he spake uh, be, before uh, his brethren uh, and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble uh, Jews, uh, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the day? And it says, Will they revive the stone out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? So here we find, we understand these two. That's why I had to go back and explain it. Because if I just started off with, and he said, you wouldn't know who was he was. So these two here, uh, the Sambal, uh, Sambal uh, Balak and uh, Tobias, they are talking to the children of Israel, nagging them day and night about them rebuilding from the rubbish. We find uh, here that they call them feeble Jews. They said, what are they going to sacrifice? Or what are they going to uh, house themselves inside and, and not be able to prosper? Are they going to be able to revive some stone? But Nehemiah had enough. And Nehemiah has got to a point where he said, look, enough is enough. And Nehemiah went and he did something that we all should learn how to do when people are nagging us and insulting us. We need to then turn to God. We're not trying to do it up ourselves and get upset and get frustrated. Because that's exactly what we do. We get upset and frustrated as soon as somebody starts nagging us or picking at us and we're ready to retaliate. We're ready to do all kinds of stuff. But Nehemiah said, I'm not even going to lift a finger because when I work, I'm going to work on this wall and rebuilding the city of God. He said, oh, what I'm going to do is go to God and ask God to deal with these folks here. So when we get down into it, we find that uh, uh, Nehemiah goes to God and he prays unto God. He says, God, look, I need you to turn this reproach against them and put it on their own heads. They're talking about us. They're saying all kinds of stuff. God, I need you to turn this around. Yeah, they're, what, what they're doing, he was basically saying what they're meaning for evil, God, I need you to turn it around for my good and let this thing be upon them. So we find that Nehemiah is petitioning God once again to help him in his uh, removing the rubbish so he can rebuild. Because these ones that came uh, were, 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 were hit 
hindrance to them. And oftentimes we find ourselves being hindered by different folks. Amen. Not just different Amen. things, but people can hinder you. Amen. They can stop Amen. your progress. They can stop you from moving forward. Yes. Uh, you, we can allow them to come in and, and their insults and everything can burden us down and, and all yes. those things. And, and we won't go forward. But, but trust and believe if you take it to God, if yes. you tell God all about it and say, God, I need you to do what you yes. said in your word. I need you to prepare a table before me in the presence of these enemies uh, and, 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 and let me continue to do what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing a work for you, God, and I need for you to move this thing out of my way so I can continue to do the work that I need to do. But oftentimes we try to do it of our own uh, and we allow those things to burden us down uh, and when we allow them to burden them down we then get fatigued, we get frustrated, and then fear sets in and we can't allow any of those things to take hold because soon as one take hold, it begins to halt the progress. We will see sure enough in, in, in a few moments that, that uh, in verse 10 uh, another one of our foundation scriptures in verse 10 it says and Judah said the strength of the bearers of uh, of the bearer uh, of this of burdens is decayed uh, and, and, and I'm going to pause for a second and, and explain that here what he's saying is these ones that are working are getting fatigued these ones that are working are getting tired not only are they tired in just the physical labor but they're tired in the mental attacks that, that these two are uh, is, uh, slinging their way calling them all kinds of names, frustrating them as they build and laughing and, and pointing fingers. Trust and believe. Uh, it's nothing like when somebody is constantly pointing fingers at you, constantly nagging at you, constantly saying all kinds of things. It got them to the point where they were fatigued. Why? Because the Bible said there was much rubbish. So that they was not able to build the wall. So they were not able to build the wall. It was so much. And they got to a point where they were so fatigued. After these uh, guys just uh, constantly saying stuff. And they were constantly working to try to get this thing done. In a, a quick and a reasonable time. Uh, they got to a point where they was just so uh, tired in their body. And they were so tired mentally. That the Bible said that the wall would, could not be built. At this particular time. So what it's especially saying is they held up the progress right. oftentimes people hold up your progress Amen. you they hold up your progress how because you worry about what they say Amen. you worry about what they're uh, talking about and, and, and how they're looking at you but trust and believe if you forget about those naysayers you you forget about those haters you forget about uh, those ones that are trying to uh, insult you on every side and you keep your focus straight on what God has purpose for yes. you to do yes. trust and believe no matter what they say say that thing that God set forth for you to do will prosper. It will come to pass. All you have to do is stay focused. But oftentimes we get fatigued when it's uh, something to be done and work to be done and we're constantly doing it. Some people are fatigued even about their jobs. Amen. Their, their secular jobs. They, they're fatigued because it's the same thing every day. Every day is the same thing. Watching this curveya belt going down the way and I'm stamping this thing. Watching it going, stamping this thing. And they get fatigued. They, 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 they get to a point where it's the same thing all the time and, and, and something and fatigue starts setting in and then it begins to hold up the progress right. your, your work uh, uh, begins to decline your your uh, your function begins to decline because you're doing the same thing all the time yeah. you become physically drained and, and you become discouraged slightly about the progress that you should have made and you find yourself not making it you you're so uh, fatigued that it's discouraged you it has made messed you up so but thanks uh, uh, to what Nehemiah is, is trying to get us to see is Nehemiah said look no matter how much they talk about us no matter how much they, they try to insult us we have to continue to build this wall yeah. we have to continue yeah. to do what, what God has placed in our hearts to do and the Bible lets us know that uh, as they begin to, to build uh, they then tried to tr use some type of trickery on Nehemiah yeah. they then send uh, uh, Nehemiah a letter and tell Nehemiah meet us down at a certain place. Yeah. Nehemiah says no I, 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 I gotta continue this work. Uh, then the Bible said they send him another letter telling him again or a messenger saying come down to this place. Uh, we need to talk to you. After about the third or fourth time the Bible said uh, it got to about the fifth and the tenth time uh, they said well come down to the place called oh no. 
That's what the Bible said. Called it, oh no. Why on earth would I go to a place called, oh no? Oh, let me get back into this word. <laughs> but they tried, to get, they tried to get Nehemiah to a place called, oh no. Nehemiah said, no, I'm, I'm not going to meet you down there. He, he, he basically said, oh no to, oh no. He said, I'm not going that way. So he gets down to, uh, uh, he sends a message back to them and he tells them, he says, no what? if you want to talk to me, uh, come to where I'm working. He said, come to my job and, and, and we can go into uh, uh, the temple here and we can talk for a few moments. Uh, see, Nehemiah was smart because he didn't know what they was going to do to him when he left out the walls. He didn't know what they was going to do to him when, when he got to that place called, oh no. Uh, he, he didn't know, but, but he said, look, what, what I need for you to do is come to me. He said, come to this place and we can commune and we can talk. But then as the story goes on, uh, Nehemiah finds himself uh, 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 telling to, to, to push the people to uh, build this wall. And the Bible says uh, uh, later on in these verses that uh, they, they were able to halt the progress. They were able to stop them because uh, uh, of the nagging, because of always being around them. So uh, oftentimes, and, and like the time like uh, of the, the title of the message removing the rubbish uh, to rebuild you have to remove some rubbish out of your way and, and, and Nehemiah said look I'm, I'm moving this rubbish out of the way and, and the rubbish came by these people uh, not only the stuff that they had to deal with uh, the, the, the rocks that was singed in the walls uh, but these rubbish was some people these uh, ones that was constantly in their way so they had to remove them out of the way so they can continue to rebuild yeah. now I gotta pause here and say this I don't know who is in your life that uh, has caused uh, uh, to, to become a hindrance to you. I don't know who that person is that, that I would just quote unquote call them rubbish, meaning they don't mean you no good, meaning they're not worth anything. Uh, these, these ones in your life, I think you need to do a self-assessment of your, your surroundings and make sure that you're not uh, packed around a bunch of rubbish. Or rubbish people that, that that's just happy about uh, uh, things in disarray and and, and looking uh, uh, a mess and, and 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 just burdened down and torn down and all that. You need to check around you and, and make sure that these ones ain't uh, uh, in your your clique because if they are, they're they're going to continue to hinder your process. They're going to continue to hinder your progress. I'm, I'm going to finish this thing up real quick. But here when we look down uh, again uh, in that verse 10, uh, it, it says that, that as they were, uh, the builders was trying to build, they were getting decayed, meaning they were being fatigued. Then it says, and there was much rubbish. And, and that's where the frustration comes in, that, that where it was much rubbish. Because they seen how uh, much uh, the city was destroyed in the beginning. They knew that the city was uh, torn down. They knew that the walls was 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 almost uh, to the ground. And now because of people nagging them, it illuminated what they were already in. All right, all right. They were already rebuilding. They already knew the situation. They already knew uh, how de uh, destructive uh, uh, the, the city was or destroyed the city was. And they uh, purposed in their heart to rebuild. But I'm telling you, it's something about people nagging at you. It's something about people frustrating you. That really gets to you and it begins to hinder your progress. But and you begin to look at things differently. You begin to see the negative when they come pointing it out to you. Because trust and believe, I have some few folks. Lord have mercy. I have a few folks that the moment you say something positive, they always say but. The moment you say something positive, they, they throw butt in there and, and however and all these other things. They try to find something negative about it. And Nehemiah was like, we're going to build this wall. Yes, it's rubbish, but we got a letter from the king that say we can go get all the material and tools and timber that we need. Trust and believe when you're about to do some work for God. God said, you got my letter right here. All you need is in my word to do whatever I need for you to do. All you have to do is go to it and understand that all I got to do is call on God. All I have to do is trust in God and believe that God is going to help me through what I'm going through and trust and believe it will come to pass. But here they was frustrated uh, because uh, uh, the Bible tells us that, that there was so much rubbish. It was so much rubbish when you started. Hallelujah. So, so it ain't changed. The situation ain't changed. The attitude changed. And that's, that's something when, when, when the attitude changed midway, you working or doing something. All right. That's why people quit their jobs uh -huh. because their attitude has changed. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Lord, let me finish. Give me five more minutes. Uh, the, the Bible says here that, that, that it was so much rubbish. So now they're getting frustrated. They're frustrated behind the fact that, that they're now looking at what they see. See, uh, my, my God tells me I can't look at what I see. I can't lean to my own understanding. I, I have to acknowledge God and understand that God is in control. And when I look at God and understand, my, my faith tells me that God, you're going to make this thing work out no matter how it looks. It looks like the valley of dry bones. It looks like things ain't going to be life or have life in it. And God, I'm seeing this thing, but I'm not going to let my attitude change. And I'm not going to let my attitude determine my altitude. Somebody what said that but we hear we find that they got frustrated uh, because it was so much rubbish now their, their attitude was beginning to change and it says so that uh, we were not able to build the wall so then as the story goes on and, and like I said a few more minutes as the story goes on fear is going to kick in right. they got uh, they first they got fatigued and frustrated now fear is getting ready to kick in yeah. they got frightened uh, about what was getting ready to happen because now these same ones uh, this uh, Sambalik and uh, Tobias they, they come and they now send threatening uh, letters to them. They send threatening things to them saying that we're going to destroy or we're going to do this and, and, and how, is, uh, how are you going to be fortified now? And they begin to get fearful in what was going on. They begin, their hearts begin to decline within themselves. But Nehemiah was on a mission. Nehemiah began to pray unto God once again and he began to tell God all about it. God, I beseech you once again that I need for you to fix this thing. I need for you to shut up the mouths of them and God began to put in his heart he said know what you do split your work crew in half he said split them in half and let the uh, workers continue to work and the other half put some spears in their hand and the other ones put some knives on their side he said gear yourself up just in case you gotta fight a little bit trust and believe sometimes uh, in the process of rebuilding you want to have to fight some fools some people you gonna have to fight some people. You gonna have to fight them. And he told him, he said, he said, let these workers continue to work. He said, but put some spears in the other one's hands. That when Sambalik and, and, and Tobias and them see them with these spears, they they gonna wanna not try to fool with them at, at that particular time. So the Bible goes on and says that as they were working, they had the spears in their hand, in one hand, and they had the work tools in the other hand, and they was working with the protection in their other hand. They said, we're gonna do what God has sent for us to do. Trust and believe when you are about a work for God and God has purposed something in your heart, no matter what somebody tries to do, know that you are armed with the word of God, that no matter what comes your way, you can continue to work and still have the protection of God in your right hand. Trust and believe in that God is going to do it. So the Bible said, Nehemiah said, continue to work on this wall. Now at that particular time, they only had the wall halfway. They had the wall halfway. And then in this halfway period, uh, uh, that's when they fashioned the, the spears and, and had the knives on their sides while they were working just in case something, as we say in, in today's term, popped off. Just in case something popped off, uh, they was ready to, to fight, lay down their, their, their working tools and fight. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to finish this thing. Hurry up. Uh, but what we find here, that, that, that as the, the, the story goes on, that they begin to build the wall and fortify it. Now the Bible said, and remember I told you, that it said, and this one was with them, and that one was with them. So each one picked a, a section of the gates, uh, and they begin to work at that particular gate, and they begin to build the walls from the gates out. So, so as they're building, and as they have their spears and their knives in their hand, and they're working, they're continuing this wall. They're continuing the wall from one gate to the other gate. They went from the sheep's gate to the dung gate. They went from the dung gate to the dragon gate. They went from the dragon's gate to the fish gate. And then after a while, the Bible said that they closed in the breach. Meaning they closed in the city of uh, Jerusalem. Meaning they rebuilt the wall enough that it was now fortified once again. Meaning that if an enemy would try to come, that they would have to go through that new form wall. So we understand here as the uh, uh, verse, uh, the chapter 6, uh, uh, verse 10 told us earlier on, verse 15 told us earlier on that the walls was finished uh, in 52 days. My God. 52, come on, think about that for a second. 52 days.
days, these uh, people uh, was able to rebuild an entire wall around a city. Lord, have mercy from rubbish. They, they, they removed all that, that rubbish that was in the way, the, the stuff that they didn't need. They moved out of the way and, and they cast it aside so they can rebuild. In 52 days, they was able to accomplish this uh, and they was able to fortify the, 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 the city walls uh, and they were able to do what was necessary to do. So my thing on today is no matter how frustrated or how fatigued or, or how frightened you may get in the things in which you are facing, trust and believe that with God on your side, and your weapon on your holster God is right there with you to be able to uh, get you through each and everything that you need to get through he's there to bring you out and he's there to bring you through all those different things that you find yourself uh, going through now these Jews they were called feeble they they were called uh, all kinds of names in the process of building but now we find that they got mustered up enough strength again and said we are well able and capable of doing what we need to do so we're going to continue to do what God has called for us to do. And that's exactly what they did. They built uh, 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 the city back up. They built this thing back where it needed to be. So they were now fortified. The city could now be repaired. And at the end of it, uh, as I said before, Jeremiah begins to list and, and he begins to tell you everybody that was involved uh, and everybody that did what needed to be done. But as I close, we find that Jeremiah and them did something that was so miraculous to me. Uh, that Jeremiah and them went back up on top of the wall and they begin to look out in the, the city and they said there's some folks in my city that shouldn't be there. There's some folks in here that, that shouldn't stay. So Jeremiah, uh, Nehemiah said, know what you need to do? Know what we need to do? We need to shut the city gates now. Amen. Now that the gates of the city are now rebuilt, he said shut the gates at night time. Don't you let nobody in that's not of us to come in here because when they come in, they're coming in with a different purpose than what we are. Oh my God, grab a hold that put in your pocket and take it home uh, you may grab hold of some people uh, in, in your life and your surroundings that, that have come to just uh, see things and, and be busy bodies and tell bearers and all those things just, just to see what you're doing and all those things but Nehemiah said know what we do we're going to shut these gates we're not going to let them in and he said and those ones that are in here he said before nightfall they got to get up out of our city they got to get away from here I told you sometimes you got to remove some rubbish in your life in order to rebuild. You can't continue to let that stuff stay there because the more you allow it to stay there, the more that thing is going to fester and begin to mess you up. So you got to get rid of it. As I'm closing, and I promise as I'm closing, we find this and my daughters is going to get me later because then I say, Dad, you said you're closing about two, two, 20 minutes ago. But but thank you, Jesus, uh, that, that we understand that, that God... Uh, oh, I, oh, I get it when I get home. Oh, trust me. I get it when I get home. <laughs> but but we find it, and I promise I'm going to close it like this. Uh, we, we find that that, that they, they put those ones out of the city. And, and the thing that I was getting to is uh, Nehemiah takes the priest and, and he grabs the remnants of the Levites. Uh, and the Bible said he goes upon the wall and he then goes to the sheep's gate. Uh, he takes out the lamb and he begins to sacrifice the lamb. Uh, the Bible said he begins to uh, uh, spread it on the people and he begins to remind the people of what God has just done yet again and the Bible said they begin to sing praises to God they begin to call on the musicians they begin to sing to the God they said Lord we're going to play our tambourines let's go get the instrument of David let's begin to go with the psalteries and harps and let's begin to praise God in this place and they begin to walk around the walls of uh, Jerusalem and they begin to look at the walls and they begin to say God I thank you trust and believe when you going through in your life and you remove the rubbish out of your way and you move those things out of your situation and you're now rebuilding stage. You can say thank you God for what you have brought me through. Thank you God for how you have brought me over. Oh, do I have two or three people here today that understand what I'm talking about? You push that rubbish to the side. You say get out of my way. I got a work to do for God. You cannot hinder my progress. Get out of the way, rubbish. I'm going to do what God has called for me to do. Hallelujah in this place. And trust and believe. Only by, only person that's mad is the enemy. The Bible said they went away sorely mad. They went away upset in their spirit. But that's all right with me. You can go away mad all you want. But simply go away from me.
thing. Hallelujah here. But thank you, Jesus. That Nehemiah said, I'm going to praise God while we got a chance. I'm going to praise God for what he has already done. I'm going to give him some glory right now. Can you give God glory right now? Can you tell God thank you? Can you tell God thank you? Hallelujah in this place. God has allowed you to remove the rubbish. Yeah, I see that person. I see that person in your life. God has allowed you to move them out of the way. So you can now be re rebuilt. God is saying spiritually, you need to get rebuilt on today. Hallelujah in your life. I don't know what happened to you. I don't know what came in to hinder your progress. But God said, move that rubbish out of the way. Hallelujah in this place. I'm in the rebuilding stage. I see God rebuilding me. I see God strengthening me and only one bad is the enemy because he's so once this knee get good once I get on my feet sure enough I feel real good in my body right now thank you Jesus I thank God for the rebuilding I thank God for the strength hallelujah in here then we praise God for just a few moments then we give God the praise those that are tuning in give God your best praise Stand to your feet. I'm closing. closing. I just get in trouble later. I get in trouble later. <laughs> I said I'm trying to close, not the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> when the spirit of the Lord comes in, we gotta let the Lord have His way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's Hallelujah. surrender our love unto the Lord. Come on, lift your hands unto the Lord. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. God, we thank you for just how you come in, God, and how you strengthen us, God. In this rebuilding stage, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. God, we thank you for how you brought us this far. Lord, and we just ask right now, Lord, the dead things in our life, the things that mean us no good, God. Lord, we ask that you remove them right now. Remove them out of our way, dear God, that we may focus on the purpose, God. Lord, and we just thank you right now for just touching our bodies, God. Lord, for how you healed, dear God, how you're doing so many things, God. Lord, you just do so many awesome things for us, God. We stand faithfully on you, trusting and believing, God, that you're working it out. So, God, we ask that you do it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. No other name that we know that we can call on, dear God, that can change situations, that can fix problems, that can lift burdens, God, that can save our soul, Lord. So, God, we call on you on today. God, we ask that you save the unsaved right now. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, when they call on you, dear God, understanding, dear God, that, that they're being destroyed and being torn down, God. Lord, we ask that you reach out to them, dear God. Lord, you said all we had to do was believe on you, God. Believe on Jesus and we shall be saved. So, God, we believe on today. Lord, and we ask that you touch them, dear God, for when they cry out, dear God. Lord, what must I do to be saved, God? Save them, Lord. Save them and fill them with your precious gift of the Holy Ghost, God. Lord, and we thank you and we praise you because we count it done in advance right now, God. All that we asked of you, God, you said all we have to do is believe we shall receive it. God, we believe it on today is already done. We're claiming it in Jesus' name. Lord, and we thank you and we praise you. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Come on, mean it in your heart. Hallelujah.